Hello everyone and good afternoon. My name is Father Bob Gross and welcome to my kitchen. Today is January 22nd, 2022. Today I'd like to uh, get online here and to make a video uh, to commemorate uh, a date that will live in infamy, one of the black marks of our country. A couple of them that have happened, one that I would probably go back to is also the Dred Scott decision back in the 1850s. But today, uh, on this day, January 22nd, 2022, we remember January 22nd, 1973. And today we remember and commemorate with great sadness and regret and the calling down upon God's mercy upon our country as we remember the 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision of Roe versus Wade, which legalized um, unrestricted abortion in our country from the moment of conception all the way up to um, right before birth, even though the Supreme Court decision tried to restrict that. So we just gotta say that there are black marks, bad decisions that have costly consequences when we make a bad moral decision. Um, and here's one of them. Um, and I wanna tell you how this decision greatly affected me and why I want to speak about it today and why I have devoted a large portion of my life into proclaiming the gospel of life. Uh, my mom and dad had me late in their marriage. My dad was 46, my mom was 39. And I was uh, what they call a whoopsie daisy <laughs> when it comes to a family. My next sibling is 10 years older. And my mom and dad were avid golfers and my mom in her last pregnancy with me um, was playing golf early in the pregnancy. And one day she went to the first tee and one of her friends from the country club said to her, Kathy, I'm surprised that you're, congratulate, surprised, you know, that you're, you're having a baby because my mom was pretty old to have a baby, 39. And this friend of my mom uh, said to her, um, well, you know, Kathy, you can take care of that. The bold, awful suggestion that my mom could be free of, of me and abort me. Uh, when I was an, a teenager early in life, my mom told me that story, and that has forever affected me. And it's affected me in this way, that every baby born since 1973 had a chance to be aborted. Every baby since 1973 had a chance to be aborted because it was legally allowed for that to happen. And when I heard that, and then I think about the over 46 million babies that were not allowed to be brought into the world because of the false compassion that you can get out of life get out of the responsibility or this is the better way of abortion just struck a chord in me and did a couple of things within me a it gave me thanks and praise to God that I was brought into a family that believed in life my mom and dad that my mom chose life and look what came of it a priest came out of it for the furtherance of the gospel of life. And I'm also asking God for his mercy upon all those who have been affected by abortion. The women who have gone through the pain of it, the psychological trauma, the emotional distress, the suffering, the silent suffering that people go through when they go through abortion. The fathers who may may never know that they were a father because the mother went ahead with the abortion without talking with the father. All the effects that's done to society, the basic doubting of the basic truth that everybody knows that when a woman is pregnant, a human being is in the womb. And how people 
hold on to such an evil and disturbing act of the destruction of an innocent, defenseless baby, hold on to that for the sake of freedom. If there is any proof of a fallen world, it's the belief that abortion is okay and should be allowed and should be tolerated. And how people have grown to see that abortion is a common and welcomed way to have birth control, that we need that. That the very gift of fertility is seen as a disease. Those are the lies that are affecting people's minds and hearts. And it cheapens human life, which has infinite value. And that happened in a profound way when the Supreme Court legalized abortion. It is an unjust law that is not to be obeyed. And it shows that laws need to be rooted in moral right for it to have a benefit for society. And that's what we're remembering today. And it's a sad day, but it's a day full of hope. I have never been so hopeful about the overcoming of Roe versus Wade than I am in my life. I listened to the oral arguments of the Mississippi state law case in front of the Supreme Court. There is solid ground, solid hope that, that can, Roe v. Wade can be overturned. So that's, that's what I'm praying for today. And then, you know what? We have a really, really difficult job if Roe versus Wade is overturned next year is we have to establish a whole new body of policy and law that will promote a culture of life that will give help to women in crisis pregnancies. And we will need societal resources in order to help people to make the choice to bring their child into the world. That's a lot to pray for, and that's what I'm praying for today. On this infamous day in which we remember a horrible day 49 years ago, when even the womb was not even a safe place to be. So if you're 50 years old or younger, I think you should call up your mom and thank her for life. And let us ask God for his great mercy upon our nation that we can be a better country, a better culture in which human life is cherished and welcomed and nurtured and lived so that those little ones can become the future leaders of our world. So today I want to conclude by offering a uh, prayer uh, that Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II wrote at the end of his encyclical, Evangelium Vitae, the Gospel of Life, and I'll offer that for all of us and for our nation today. It's a prayer to Our Lady. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Mary, bright dawn of the new world, mother of the living, to you do we entrust the cause of life. Look down, O Mother, upon the vast numbers of babies not allowed to be born, of the poor whose lives are made difficult, of men and women who are victims of brutal violence, of the elderly and the sick killed by indifference or out of misguided mercy. Grant that all who believe in your Son may proclaim the gospel of life with honesty and love to the people of our time. Obtain for them the grace to accept the gospel as a gift ever new, the joy of celebrating it with gratitude throughout their lives and the courage to bear witness to it resolutely in order to build, together with all people of goodwill, the civilization of truth and love to the praise and glory of God, the creator and lover of life. Mary, mother of all Christians and mother of life, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. And uh, we'll see you at Holy Mass this weekend. Peace.